welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video and talk about Spoiled. Earlier in the week on June 1st we got not one but two teaser trailers for The L Word Generation Q Season 2 and yesterday there was the Outfront and it was an interview with four of the main cast members and it was Ari Mandy, Leo Shang, Jacqueline Tobani, and Rosanne Zayas. So it was really great to see like new content. They're talking about season two. They're talking about the show in general, some of the guest stars, and it's just really nice to start to see some of the press kicking off for season two. And I'm here to tell you guys all about it in case you weren't able to catch it but I will put a link in the description box if you want to go and watch it yourself. I really do recommend it, you know, if you're a Generation Q fan, it was a really good interview. I think the person who did the interview too, her name was Trish, she was really good and she asked, you know, really good questions because they, they can't like basically say, so tell us what's gonna happen in season two. So I liked the way, you know, she kind of didn't give up and kept asking them about season two, but also was getting us some little bits of information. So it was really well done. And I just really enjoyed seeing the four actors there on screen talking about the L word. And yeah, let's, let's get into talking about what happened and what questions were asked. But if you are new to the channel or you're not yet subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you're kept up to date with everything that's going on in the L Word sphere because all the stuff for season two is really kicking off now. And if at any point you enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as liking, commenting, sharing the video really helps the channel out and engaging in the content just really helps the channel grow because it's difficult whenever you're talking about LGBTQ stuff. So let's get into what went on at the Outfront and start off with the interviewer basically was asking them how it's been being on the show in general and their feelings about it because Obviously, they've shot the first season, they've seen the effects and being able to see people's reaction to it. And then they've also gone through what we've all gone through over the last year and then being able to go back to work and film season two, albeit in different circumstances. And the first thing was they were so, so complimentary of not only the show, the fans, but the atmosphere on set and how the show is ran and it and you know the environment that it creates because people who don't work in like TV and, and films or haven't ever had that sort of on set experience it's very different than it's portrayed in film and television and they were talking about how before they really got into season one how all of them sat down with the writers and not only were they kind of talking things through and, and hearing about the characters, but they the writers were taking notes and learning more about what type of people they had cast and trying to make things more natural and like taking note of the way they kind of conducted themselves. And paying attention to those little details are really, really important to make sure that things are coming across like very naturally on screen. And although we have had season one, like we only got eight episodes of season one. It was a very short season. And when you're also having this very strange phenomenon of having three four characters in some episodes that have been on people's screens for you know a very long time for six years but it was such a groundbreaking show that there's still people right now who people that that i talk to a lot who this is the first time season two that they're actually going to watch the show live because they've discovered it 
you know, and a lot of them are younger and they're only discovering it because of Generation Q. So you're also then bringing in these new characters and introducing them and then weaving them into the world that the old characters were in, but they're kind of in a new world too. So it's, it's all very, like a very strange set of circumstances. And it seems to be that the four of them all had the exact same things to say about the show and the atmosphere that we've heard from the OG cast when they were filming the original L Word and saying how unique and special that set was. Is it because there's a lot of women on set? Is it because there's a lot of queer people on set? Like probably a bit of both. And I just, I love hearing about this like really special atmosphere that the L Word and Generation Q have created. And I think the best way I've ever heard it put is when Leisha and Kate interviewed Laurel on their podcast Pants. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to their podcast, it's really, really good. But the Laurel episode is absolutely a cannot miss because she talks about basically why she kind of transitioned away from acting and went to painting. And she tells this story about her first, you know, job after she had the L word. And she was like, I'd been in this L word magic bubble of this great atmosphere and the way that we were treated was very different. And then she kind of got like a very harsh experience on a set. And, you know, she was like, oh, if I can't be the L word, then I'm gonna, you know, go into painting. And she was very successful there. But it seems as though they've recreated this magic set because that is pretty evident by even a lot of the way the crew, they all post and the way they interact with people, it just seems like a really fun, cool place to work. And it definitely, you can see that on not only the television screen, but through social media and how everyone seems to get along. It, you know, it is work at the end of the day, but the crew and then you see some of these like great friendships like Leisha and Kate like Sephira and Ari that have formed and they seem like they're having a great time all the time. They also talked a bit about some of the differences that are shaped by what the actors have given feedback and things. And again, people who haven't had a lot of experience like working on television and in film, it's very, very rare that they even care what the actors think. Like, I, I know one of the other shows that was really good about doing this was The Office. And another podcast plug is if you haven't listened to Office Ladies, which is Angela and uh, Pam from The Office, they go over like each of the episodes and then they talk about like what it was like filming each of those episodes and things that we might not know behind the scenes and their podcast was why when Kate and Leisha were asking for suggestions I was like oh you should do the L word and watch certain episodes and now that's what they're gonna do so I think that's really cool I think it'll be an awesome thing for the summer but the office was one of these places where the actors could go to the writers and say hey I think you should do this or this line doesn't feel natural and they all talked about this a lot during the interview. And two of the best examples of it were Jacqueline Turbani was saying, you know, going into the show, like the, in the very beginning, a big part of Finley's character was that she was this Olympic swimmer. And that was why she was a little bit stunted growth wise. And she'd been training for this all her life. And then Jacqueline was like, oh, and then in episode four, when I'm in the pool, you know, the the riders and the showrunner kind of said to her, like, you don't look like an Olympic swimmer that's like treading water in a pool. So then they went back and they took that character part out of the plot in the pilot. So, you know, that it still says that on, on a couple of character bios, but they never actually like canonized that in, in the show. It was only from like I think the Showtime website's where I got that from originally. So it looks like that's not, you know, a plot point anymore. 
And then Leo Shang was also saying that originally Micah was supposed to be working at JPL and he kind of said, well, Asians like get this very stereotype of always working and in this sort of thing. And like, although JPL, like, you know, is an amazing, amazing job and getting that feedback, they then changed Micah to be more of like in the social sciences background. And so it, it really seems as though they're taking on board a lot of what the actors are saying. And I, I think that's like awesome because in television and film, people get like these big egos and stuff like that. And it really seems as though there's not a lot of egos on the L word because not only are they taking notes and things from the actors, but they're able to say, you know, oh, this, you know, like in Leo's case, like he's moved through the world as a trans man and an Asian man, and he can bring something to this storyline that maybe somebody else can. And I think that's really awesome. And, you know, major kudos to them for using this to make the show even better. They also were talking a bit about some of like the intimate scenes in the show and how they were going and seeing like some of the fan reactions and stuff and, and they told some like funny stories and the way that they were talking about the previous show too, I'll, they talked a little bit about Jennifer, Kate and Leisha too and Jacqueline and Leo, they definitely seem as though that they were fans of the show prior to being cast or being on the show and I mean, maybe, maybe Ari and Rosani were too, but it's just Leo and, and Jacqueline had this like little exchange where they were saying on the day when Laurel came to set the first time, like when they were doing the table read that Leo and Jacqueline were like sitting next to each other and they were like, oh my God, we can't believe Tina's here. Like, this is amazing. And I mean, the average per like they had to have watched the show to have that kind of reaction. And I don't think that you have that kind of reaction if you've watched the show because you've been cast in it. Like it definitely seems as though they were fans and that they at least, you know, had, had watched the show sometime prior to being cast. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I wonder if we'll hear some other stories down the road about other people appearing in season two and, and their reactions to those people coming to the table reads. They also talked a little bit about Jennifer, Kate and Leisha and basically what they've learned from them and, and how it is working with them. And of course they were very complimentary of them and they were saying how the advice as a whole from them was to just kind of enjoy the ride and, and have fun with it. And I feel as though that's really legitimate advice from them because they are basically getting to redo this huge success that they had. I mean, their most iconic roles, whether they like it or not, are Bet Alice and Shane. And not very many actors get to relive that whole thing. Like, they are getting basically a redo and it would be like you know friends came back and the six of them got to redo this so i'm sure that they have recognized how awesome it was to have those six seasons and be on a really successful show and to have even like fan conventions and people wanting to i don't know do something crazy like make youtube videos <laughs> or all the fan reaction and even more now seeing it on social media and all this other stuff that they have then lived the aftermath of not having the show anymore and having this period you know between basically the show ending and then talks for the reboot and getting it done and they were the real driving force to do that. So as well as being executive producers, you know, they have a lot more hand in it than they did with the original. So I think that it definitely seems as though they have had a, a big part in having this very comfortable and safe atmosphere where they also were giving them the advice of, you know, if there's something that's making you uncomfortable or something you don't wanna do, 
they always are telling them this is what the four of them are saying that you know tell someone like say you don't want to do it speak up and Jacqueline was saying you know maybe this is us giving the advice that they would have wanted to hear when they were young actors because especially like Leisha and Kate were really young when the original L word started especially I think what Kate was 25 so it definitely seems as though they're leading from the top and creating a very good environment along with obviously the writers, directors, showrunners, producers, everybody. So on to what everybody probably wants to hear. What did they say about season two? The important thing. And they obviously were not allowed to give too much away. And I did, the interviewer was like, you know, really pressing them, but in like a fun way. She was like, I don't want anyone to get in trouble, but can you say anything? And she kind of gave them this, you know, it was a good question because it's like, we were getting something, but really it didn't tell us anything. And she asked them to all say, for your character, give us one word that, you know, this season is going to be. And each of them said, so for Sophie, the word was roller coaster. And it's weird because when she was saying one word, I said in my head, I bet you someone says roller coaster. Uh, Leo said discovery. Ari said choices. And Jacqueline said rough and joyful. And obviously, you know, <laughs> our imaginations can run wild with that, but it doesn't define anything too much. They did also talk about the guest stars and there was a little bit of that you could read between the lines here that they were saying oh it was so awesome to meet Rosie Jacqueline in particular was very I was so excited to meet her you know she was awesome and they also talked about Donald Faison being like really hilarious and Ari was saying that he's like one of the funniest people she's ever met so it sounds like when they were both there they created a nice atmosphere and they were very complimentary about Vanessa Williams as well and saying she was very kind. So it definitely seemed from what they were saying because they were talking about how they didn't really, well, the ones that definitely said they didn't was Jacqueline and Leo said that they didn't have any specific scenes with Rosie. Jacqueline said there's one scene where she's in the vicinity so that could be like, I don't know, the she's working at Dana's and, and Carrie's in there. But it definitely makes it interesting if like they're not having too much interaction. I guess Ari didn't say anything, so she could have had scenes with Rosie. And actually yesterday there was an interview that went up with Eileen Chaikin and it was mostly about Law and Order. And then the interviewer asked one question about Generation Q season two. And she basically, they asked about Bettina and she basically said that it's going to be like a thrilling ride. So it definitely seems as though they're, they're in for a crazy season and storyline because, I, I mean, as we saw from the trailer, like, and from Instagram and crew pictures and things it definitely seems as though Laurel Holloman is in a good fair amount of episodes and again we know that Rosie is in three so if that is purely you know Carrie, Bet, Tina, Angie time there is probably a lot going down in those three episodes and then whatever else happens in the episodes that Laurel's in without Rosie. And Ari did say that there's going to be a lot more intermingling this season, which I, like I really want to see that because the first season, again, like they had to establish everyone and they only had eight episodes. So I'm really excited to see a lot more of the OGs and the newbies like all crossing over. And it definitely bodes well intermingling for things like Ben and Gigi. <laughs> Although Jacqueline did also say when they were talking about Leisha, Kate and Jennifer that not all of them get to work with all of them at the same time. So hopefully we do get to see 
some scenes with with all of them in it and a bit more than because they were very segregated by like the work environment like Bet and Danny Sophie Finley and Alice and like that so it definitely will be interesting to see everybody interacting a little bit more and that's pretty much it for what they had to say but I really really enjoyed this as I said I really encourage you guys to go over and watch it on the out front it was a really good interview they were just the four of them were really light and like laughing a lot and the interviewer again was very good so i really really suggest that you guys go and check it out it is only like about 40 minutes so the season two stuff is towards the end so if you're looking out for for just that specific bit but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section did any of this spark anything in your mind about what we are getting for season two and if you enjoyed the video please give it a big thumbs up as it really really helps the channel out and don't be afraid to share the video and of course if you're not already make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with everything that's going on in the l word sphere and also don't forget to follow me over on social media because i post a lot of content over there and if you want to get your hands on some really cool L Word Generation Q and OG merchandise, you can check out my merch store, which is linked in the description box down below. And that is pretty much it for this video. So thank you as always so much for watching. Make sure if you haven't already checked them out, check out my immediate reaction to the trailer and also my deep dive into both of the trailers and slowing them down, showing them on screen, talking a bit more about everything and keep those eyes peeled for even more L Word content coming very soon. So have a great first weekend to Pride and next weekend is the big Pride where I live. So I actually even got a drone, so I'm gonna be showing some really cool uh, videos next week so look out for those as well so make sure to stay safe take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next one bye guys